Hey, before I start, I made a few actual real life enamel pins. Some of you might know these designs from my Instagram, but now you can buy them in a the form of a pin. They're huge and so sick. I love them. And if you order them now, you'll get a 50% discount if you use the code new plastic at checkout. Link in the description. Okay, now we can start. Hey, guy from New Plastic, and now that Asus is an integral part of our rendering life, it's time to compare it to a pretty new color profile in town, AGX. Before that, feel free to check out the latest procedural Damascus pack on my Gumroad with over 20 fully procedural, highly realistic, and infinitely customizable Damascus materials for Octane C4D. If you want to have some fun with it, um, link in the description. Also consider supporting on Patreon and membership where you get all these tutorial project files as well as other cool perks, but mostly help me make more and better content for y'all. So off bat, I want to give a huge shout out to Elskxa or Elijah, who is a pretty active member on the Octane forums and runs his extremely eloquent and beautifully designed website about color management for CG artists. I'll put the link in the description. Go check it out. I learned a lot from him. Same for Chris Brejan, Bre Brejan, not sure. Great resource for learning about color management for CGI. Another huge shout out to Trey Sobotka who developed AGX. I can't begin to imagine the genius and visionary brain behind developing this, this thing, which technically is not a color profile, but more of a rendering transform. Now look, I'm with you. I truly think it's hard for people who know color management to imagine how tough it is for the average CG artist to wrap their heads around all this information. To me, color management is like rocket science. It's that complex. We're not going to dive into color management today, and I'm definitely a complete idiot when it comes to that. But all I'll say is that from what I understand, a rendering transform is a type of a calculation that translates the massive amount of color and light information in your working space, as in your rendering program or the information that your camera receives if you talk about photography, into a much narrower amount of information that your screen can display in a way that looks correct and accurate to the source. And yes, I know that a lot of you are still confused, but I don't wanna go down that rabbit hole just yet. We'll save the heavy explaining to a different video. What we're going to do today is simply look at how AGX's render transform compares to ACES. Follow me on Instagram at ojinx, subscribe, share, comment, bell, season your cast iron pens or they will develop rust. Let's go. Okay, so simple scene here. I have an HDRI just doing some subtle ambient light and this large area light from the right doing most of the work. So right now I have the image tone mapped through ACES. So this highlight compression isn't doing anything and we can just view the ACES tone mapping in the live viewer. Uh, without ACES, you'll just get a regular sRGB curve on the image, which gives us less than desirable results. We can crank up the highlight compression, but it just doesn't compare to the way ACES is dealing with highlights and shadows. But we don't care about that in this video. We're here to see how the new AGX transform is comparing to ACES. So to activate the AGX profile, you'll first need to go to the color management tab in your Octane settings tab and input the AGX config file. You can get it on this GitHub page. I'll put the link in the description. Once you're here, you'll click on the green code button and click download zip. You extract the zip file and you'll have this config.ocio file, which is the file that you should input here, just like we had to do with ACES before the last Octane update. Once you did that, you go to the camera imager tab, OCIO tab, and now you'll have all these AGX view options. I chose sRGB AGX, and in the OCIO look, choose punchy. And that's it. Now in the live viewer, you can select the OCIO view from the bottom of the list. And this is how AGX looks like. It's beautiful, and without looking too deep, it looks just as good as ACES. But let's examine the differences more closely. If I change the view back to ACES, the first thing you'll notice is how much more contrasty it is. Very dark shadows and brighter highlights. AGX has less contrast, but that means we kind of preserve more details in the shadows and in the highlights. Let's do an AB comparison. The left side is AGX and the right side is ACES. Look at the glass. AGX is almost slightly washed out compared to ACES. And we are on the punchy look. If I change the look to none, it's even more washed out. You also have a golden look, which has this sepia look, uh, but punchy will get you the closest to your true quote unquote image. And both of them are still better than the regular sRGB look. Okay, let's examine another big difference between AGX and ACES. I have this bright red ring light in the back. We're viewing the image in ACES and it looks absolutely gorgeous. But if we look at the bright highlights here, 
we can actually see that as the red highlights get brighter and brighter, they actually become more orange. This is called hue shifting or hue skewing. It basically means that the way ACES translates each color channel, as the red channel is getting closer to white, it's shifting to its neighboring channels, which in this case is orange. Now, if we compare it to AGX, you can see it's doing a much better job in keeping the red all the way to white. Not only that, but it's now easier to see that AGX is shifting to white less quickly. The highlights get brighter more gradually, keeping more detail on the way. This makes a pretty significant difference in how both images look. But is one better than the other? I don't know. Technically, AGX is more correct, but artistically, I personally kind of love that hue shift. It feels more like a realistic imperfection. I mean, if you actually look at photos of bright red light sources, you'll see kind of the same effect. Probably due to the same reasons in how those photos were handled in their color management, but they definitely don't feel wrong to a point of non-usability. If I change the light source to blue, you can also see how there's a slight hue shift to purple in ACES uh, that doesn't happen in AGX. That hue shift is also not happening in regular sRGB. Other than that, both AGX and ACES are doing a great job in extreme over and under exposure, beautiful transitions to bright and dark. But if we compare AGX on the left to ACES on the right, in high exposure, AGX is kind of doing a better job keeping more detail in this blown out image. Not that you'll be rendering images this blown out, but it's important to understand how your image looks in extreme situations and extreme lighting. I haven't seen much hue shifting in other color channels, mostly red and blue. Okay, lastly, to render out using AGX, you want to first of all make sure you're rendering in EXR. The only other viable alternative will be TIFF, but EXR should be your go-to. Avoid PNGs and JPEGs. If you want to keep all the dynamic range and do a lot of post compositing, keep the color space linear sRGB and convert the image to AGX in your compositing software. If you want to bake in the AGX look into your image and just render out a simple tone mapped image with the AGX look, you can select the OCIO option in the color space, then click on select OCIO, go to color space at the bottom, choose appearance and appearance punchy sRGB. This will give you the same image you see in your live viewer without keeping all the dynamic range. It will look good, but you won't be able to do any real post compositing work on it. I think in the next tutorial, I'll go over the importance of keeping your renders in a linear, high dynamic range output and how to handle it in After Effects for both AGX and ACES. So what do you think? Do you like AGX better than ACES? Are you going to permanently switch to any of them? Is this too complicated for someone who doesn't understand color management? Let me know. That's it. Check out the latest procedural Damascus pack on my Gumroad. Consider Patreon and membership. And a fresh Prince high five to my most fly patrons and members Manuel Melez, Yin and Gong, Guillaume Lopez, Dave Toro, Marie Robbins, Swarius Chari, Eric Hu, Daniel Larry, Minky Kim, Adir, Jamie Nix, Leo, Miskick 2S, Petter Odiger, Junji Shin, Chris Hyde, Elda Boyd, Farong Farong, Katie Royal, Derek Fredrickson, Rasmus Holmquist, White Picks, 3D Monkey Biz, Arlen, Suki Violet Sue, The 22 Design, Joel Rieger, Adrian Desvale, Derek Schultz, Maurice Hickendorf, The Studio Image, Matus Jadzajewski, Blue Hamill, Mark Cragen, Joshua Akoi, Punks Accordion Siri, Webb, Hong Idiot, Maddie DeGreldre, Cho Yun Jun, NZE, IEMN, Golfino666, Ali Esser, Mouse from Next House, Rom30, Leandro Marimon, May, Baugasm, Shane, Perry Cooper, Big Max, MyZDD, Hanna Kazeka, Lotaro Gonzalez Toledo, and everybody else on the list. Thank you so much. I love you. Have a great day. Peace.